all of you beautiful people out there. My name is Majestic Muffin, and welcome back to the Doki Doki Literature Club. Now, I have very little time to do this, <laughs> so we're just gonna jump right into it. So, yeah, okay. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little bit more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Kaneki. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Always. I'm just still not used to being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. Hey, sometimes it's the simplest things, okay? Like, you never know. You never know. Sometimes it could be just like waiting in line to get a cookie and you get the last one and the feeling of triumph for that last cookie. <laughs> okay. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Huh? <laughs> That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Huh? <laughs> Why that? All of a sudden. No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, ah. <laughs> Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. Coin purse. <laughs> I don't know what's starting. <laughs> she fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins. Oh. Mood. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming into the public. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so <laughs> same. And th so that only leaves you one option. <laughs> Ugh, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel gu guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't listening or anything. Or, sorry, that's not her face. I wasn't listening or anything. I was just something in my book. Yuri. Tell Kaneki to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Right? Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling mischievous so it's not like that, your suffering is fair enough for its re retribution. <laughs> uh, did, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh... <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, now I have to accept the revolution. <laughs> Retribution. That! <laughs> Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little... I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? Uh, yeah. Hehe. Hehe hehe hehe. Sorry. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sari knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sari. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks Sari in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Huh? A, a cookie? I'm so confused. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. I have one of those on my desk. You can't see it. But I have a giant cookie wrapped in plastic as well. <laughs> Sarah glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my re restitution. <laughs> Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to give it to you. Or I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Haha. <laughs> Natsuki? That's so nice of you! Wait, what? I'm so happy! Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it! Sayori rapidly turns over the wrapper and takes a big bite. Sure would. Hmm. Sayori suddenly cla clasped her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> Aw. You're going through a lot of her, just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, <laughs> yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez! Beggars can't be choosers. But here's the chocolate. 
chocolate is always better, okay? Let me just say that right now. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Hi. So I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. He. Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie Sonia and Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off for What? <laughs> Sayori suddenly leans out- Oh, and takes a bite, a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful of Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori- Huh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the cover. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Huh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. It's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Hey! Don't tell yourself short. You're all beautiful. And I love all of you. <laughs> That's true. Stop it. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Oh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Huh? Monica chose to go up over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Jeez. Oh, but boyfriend... <laughs> What on earth are you talking about? Oh my gosh, sorry. Monica quizzically, quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, <laughs> well, my last period today was at the study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, <laughs> I don't really... I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. Same. I mean, I kind of know a little bit. It's hard though. <laughs> That's so cool. Sorry. <laughs> you should play something for us, Monica. That's... <laughs> Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay. That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Tommy. Jeez, oh, okay. Monica smiles to me. As per usual! Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Man, looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read the, some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual, but it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Huh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event, so it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori's talking to, taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her delib deliberating like this. Huh. That's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What, what kind? <laughs> food! Where? <laughs> Ah, well, I guess we could- Cookies! <laughs> Good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. <laughs> cupcakes it is then. Oh 
Oh my gosh, charger, cords, move! Okay. I'm hungry. You're always hungry, dude. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self, but therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make things come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her go on... Wait, what? <laughs> I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Well, hello! <laughs> I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school- Does our school- <laughs> Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know. <gasps> Blast for me. <laughs> You'll need to get used to that. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Huh? Sayori glances around at herself. How's it written all over me? <laughs> you were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Huh? I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need to brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain under your collar right there. I tried to wipe off the stain with my finger. Nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. <laughs> hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori? Why do you... Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Huh? That's super mean. That is mean. Jeez, what the heck? Sorry, but you'll thank me later. Start to find a blazer from the bottom. <laughs> Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. <laughs> well, this is suggestive. Hello. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> what is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Huh? Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh. <clears throat> I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, since I'm trying to... Go, oh, you're out. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near your chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. <laughs> Just don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway... You look much better now, so... Uh, why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? <laughs> it's so stuffy. It's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew. That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. Aw. So, if I keep this unbuttoned, then I won't have to get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? Why are you saying that like that's a good thing? Because... If I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway, so that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Huh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. <laughs> fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So, maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. Doing it again, Sayori. Oh, but I was joking that time! Man, it's impossible to tell with you that sometimes. Okay, everyone! Huh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Okay, I can't, can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I, or, yeah, same. I failed to sound un en enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. Uh, 
Sayori, of course! Hello! Hmm. Um, <laughs> I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me! Huh? I'm not hiding anything. But... Your poems are so good! Yesterday's and this one's too! You can't tell me you haven't done this before! I mean... You're really the only one who feels that way, so... Huh? No way! Not even Natsuki? <laughs> Natsuki? Not even Natsuki! <laughs> well, I guess Natsuki's the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Oh my gosh! My heart, my soul! Ooh! Boy! <laughs> Would you look at that? Huh? But, but stop thinking weird things, idiot. That wasn't... I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. in the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. Oh my gosh, my heart, my soul. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, okay? <laughs> you have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Huh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey, I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Mm, maybe. Sayori starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Hanaki. Will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give this to you when we go home. Really? Snap. What? Snap. Oh. <laughs> I broke my pencil! Sarah hastily bends down to pick up, up the piece she dropped. But being inattentive to her surrounding, she bumps right into me. Sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sarah clutches the desk between her to support himself. He's shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sarah. Yeah. The grab Sarah's arm and help her to sit at the desk. Anyway, you still haven't read your poem. Oh! Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. I'd like to read the poems that we write. I want to know. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Oh my gosh, this is so much to read! Okay, bonnets. I pop off my... What? I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in, my, in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other. Holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something, but all I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. Sorry. That is- Holy crap, Sarah, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Maybe. Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Oh, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out so good. 
So you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You're right. You're right, Sayori. You go, girl. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Wow, well, okay. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those signs? But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay. Who well, should I show my poem to next? Let's just keep on down the line. Like usual. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps like, glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Ugh. Hmm? Is it that bad? Again? No, no, it's not. It's good. It's really good, okay? There, I said it! Ugh, this wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. Trying to impress me? Obviously, you think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break. Jeez, well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you, you... Oof. <laughs> I am such a flirt. <laughs> Natsuki's face freezes, like she just realized something. You, you... You're trying to impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. Then the poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I uh, have to use the bathroom. Red face Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Hey, Kaneki. Did you do something to Natsuki? I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No. I just told her that my voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Hmm? Monica sees my poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads through it, her smile not fading from her face. I see. You wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? I mean, not really. In fact, didn't she like your poems a lot the other day, too? I'm surprised you know her taste art so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Kaneki? Cheating? What do you mean by that? How do you cheat in writing poems? Never mind, I'm just kidding. I didn't understand Monica's joke at all. Anyway, how do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. Hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches a poem out of Matsuki. Ma Matsuki's? <laughs> Monica's hand! Neither of us noticed her re entered the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? Of course, I liked it. Ugh. You should really stop reading things that are for you, you know. You have a bad habit of doing that. Huh? Monica wrote this poem. We're supposed to share with everyone, right? Ugh. Natsuki freeze. Natsuki freezes! <laughs> She apparently forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Kaneki is done sharing his poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would like to read this poem anyway. In fact, I'm just gonna hold on to this. If you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Ugh. Never mind. Uh, Natsuki, I'll give you the poem, but that's still not- What? No, we're supposed to give it to Sayori! What? I'm so confused. But that's still not very fair to Yuri, she still hasn't gotten to read it yet. So what? Well, I guess Kaneki is right, Natsuki. It's not fair if you don't let everyone finish reading it. Fine. Natsuki returns my poem. It's not like she's going to like it, though. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. Hey, jeez. Amy likes spiders. Sorry. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggling, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she hurt or if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. This world is better off without spider lovers, and I'm going to tell everyone. One second, I need a little sip of water. <sighs> All this talking is wearing me out. Hydration, guys. Gotta keep hydrated. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. <laughs> anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. 
I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much similar analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks like- That doesn't matter, it can be about anything. Everyone should be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of people find out they make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. Yes! Great girl! I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. Oh my gosh. But I want... Yeah, sorry, can't read. Nor can I speak. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good poem for... A good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Or should I show my poem? Well, we already showed it to Monica, so let's show it to Yuri. Do I have to show it to Monica anyway? Even though she technically already read it? I don't know. Huh? I disrespected Natsuki yesterday. Because reading this poem, now I know why you got mad at me. Because you prefer her writing over mine. That's not really true. <laughs> Meaning when I disrespected her, I disrespected you too, didn't I? Oh no. Yuri! <laughs> no! That is not the point! <laughs> you might be reading into this a little bit too much. Sorry. <laughs> How could I be so stupid? I always let these things happen. Whenever I think before I speak, I just come off as awkward and unlikable. But if I speak without thinking, the things I want to keep inside come out, make people hate me. So please don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Monica wants. But it's not fair It's not fair to you when you could be enjoying your time with Natsuki and Sayori. Yuri, please. It makes it easier for me if you don't express any concern. Besides, I have my books with me. That's all I need. Yuri smiles sadly and puts her head down on her desk. What the I'm frustrated, I don't hate her, but it, as if she's not capable of listening to me over her own thoughts. I sigh to myself. All I can do is accept that's how she feels. She wants to be left alone, then I have no choice but to abide to that request. Okay? <laughs> um. Hi again. That was kind of silly with Natsuki earlier, wasn't it? I'm glad the two of you be have been getting along so well. That's one way of putting it. Anyway, I already read your poem, but you can go ahead and read mine now. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> right into it then, I guess. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Hmm. It's even more abstract than the last one, huh? And obscure. What? Like, I've written some kind of obscure poems. <laughs> but, like, I write poems. Not because of this game or anything, but I have written poems. I've started to write poems. And the meaning behind them is really... It jumps out at you. A lot. And like, except for like two. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. I agree. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's so hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is, is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this stuff even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. What? Okay, everyone. <laughs> We're all done reading each other's poems, right? 
I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put it together. Wait, what? It's not like we can put anything together in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last-minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep this simple, okay? We don't even need more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we could give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry. I thought you had heard already. We are going to be performing. Performing? Monica. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let everyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hehe. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring the poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Huh? Well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea. But they didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys... No, Sayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then we'll inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, and finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all stuck and Oh, club. <laughs> I thought it said dub and I was really confused. Club today. <laughs> Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all, all it takes standing from the roof for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you all can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have an argument left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. Well, what about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone's, everyone else's expected faces. I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Huh? That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to get the best of me. Oh gosh. <laughs> You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reading them in front of each other. Then no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Um, yeah, that's not, that's not a great thought. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Michael clicks through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites to bring the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. But yeah, she's the only one up there. We've been taught to do that. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The recitation. The four of us applaud. Naturally. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That that was so good. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Yuri? I'll go next. Uh, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called Yuri anciently glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! <laughs> it's called... It's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. What? 
Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just moments ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like I'm about to take a drink of water! Okay. It almost looks like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the shape or the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. <laughs> the poem is full of twists and turns and the structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse in the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I is that to me to save the situation? As usual, I'm the first to start applauding. That was me applauding. Amaron joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud to her, but we were so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Jeez, oh, she zoomed out of there. <laughs> Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Looks like Yuri's down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm going next then. Siri so hops up onto the chair, up, out of her chair, and carefully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Siri, it's a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> How'd you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your home. In your home. My app or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out best that way. I see, I see. Okay then, Sayori begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her own soft voice. <sighs> Sometimes it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I, would prob I wouldn't probably think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! <laughs> yes, you did, because you're amazing. Good job, Sayori! Oh, wow, that was really high. Good job, Sayori! <laughs> Good job, Sayori! <laughs> I forgot if you liked it. I guess that's a good sign. <laughs> what does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of your poem fits really nicely, but... It might be that the other poems won't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Well, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems here where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's... Well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before him. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Kaneki lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to. That's okay. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with the one that I wrote for today. I stand up, except for him. Oh, jeez. <laughs> everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I reset my poem. Since I'm not exactly competent in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. That was, <clears throat> that was her taking a breath. <laughs> Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style. And it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You, you better not make me do that again. Uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite the poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. 
but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That actually makes sense. <laughs> that's a surprise, not to me. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have to worry much about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, you should probably find some other poems to recite instead. That's fine too, it doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort in the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone, I think that's about it for today. I know the festival coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out re really nicely so far, so let's continue to do that. As for the festival, we'll finish playing tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. Is this, is this? All right. Guys, stand up. There's no way you'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to pull through. It's for the sake of the club. I'm impressing Monica. <laughs> then I'll just have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> and with that, we are going to end this episode here. I hope you guys liked it. Comment what other games I should play next. Like if you like to subscribe if you feel like it. And I will see all the beautiful people in the next video. Bye-bye! Well, let's get to see what happens next.